All right, so here is the one model that I find most useful to illustrate meiosis that we have in lab. Uh, strangely enough, the entire top row is dedicated strictly to prophase one. And if you remember, prophase one, as I mentioned in the previous uh, video, is the most complicated. So let's go through some of the stages here. This is a cell just fresh out of interphase, and it is diploid, and you can't tell that by looking at it, but it's diploid. You can see that there's no chromosomes evident, but then you can start to see them kind of becoming evident, and the nuclear envelope begins to get more porous as we go. So this appearance of these chromosomes is what they call condensing. The chromosomes condense from an unraveled form called chromatin, T-I-N, to these compact forms called chromosomes. Now it's not real evident here, but each of these things, this red thing on top and the blue thing on the bottom, each of these is a replicated chromosome. You can kind of see that there's two little structures here, two there. So this represents a tetrad. This is all four copies of the genetic information from one pair of replicated chromosomes uh, in one spot. And here you see what this represents is, these are those uh, chiasmata. These are the, the places where they contact. So the overall process is called synapsis. The places where they touch are called chiasmata. And this whole structure is called a tetrad. And you can really see it over here. One, two, three, four copies of the genetic material. So prophase one is over by here. This is probably the most representative of the, of the images uh, of the model uh, sections that to represent prophase one. Still a diploid cell undergoing uh, crossing over. That, that exchange. Now we come back down here and we see that we've got a metaphase plate or an equator. In this case, as opposed to my drawing on the board, it's running left to right, doesn't really matter. I could turn it this way and now it's running up and down, right? So it doesn't matter at all. Uh, the spindle has basically completely formed here. These guys right up here are called centrioles. I'm not sure if I mentioned that in the previous video, but called centrioles. If it's not in your lab book, don't learn it. I'm just letting you know complete uh, information here. Spindle form, spindle fibers attach at the centromeres. And then by the time we get here, this is actually kind of, this is where I don't like this model because this is really, you, you kind of skipped anaphase. This is kind of anaphase going into uh, telophase. Anaphase is when they begin to be pulled apart. Uh, telophase, in my opinion, is when you start to see this cleavage furrow and then it's finished off right here uh, with cytokinesis, which is the complete separation of the cells. But by any case, this, by this point right here to the left and above here, this is all meiosis one. The whole top row is prophase, metaphase, anaphase going into telophase, and then uh, cytokinesis. So this model, uh, this exact, uh, piece right here doesn't really clearly show you one or the other phases so anyway understanding the process is the important part right now this they've jammed tele I'm sorry they've jammed meiosis 2 into these two spots so they've stuffed it all together but you can see that in these cells these are now haploid cells haploid right one two copies one two chromosomes uh, whereas up here you had one two three four so two chromosomes, two chromosomes, two chromosomes. So by the time we get done with meiosis two, which you can't see any of the individual phases in here, you've got one, two, three, four daughter cells from your initial single cell, each of these four daughter cells being haploid. And if this were a male, you'd attach a flagellum onto each one of these and you know roll those out of the, the assembly plant. If it were a female, you would have divided these unevenly, creating a single large uh, ovum and potentially up to three polar bodies.